so we grew up on a farm in the country and so there was a little group of kids in our area like on our road that we grew up on but we didn't see each other like a ton because no. it was actually like a long bike ride or walk to go see yeah. each other so mostly like growing up it was diana and i and our younger brother but one time like the whole neighborhood clan got together and they ended up at our house they wanted to jump on the trampoline we were the only ones with the trampoline and so we knew though growing up that it was summer it's okay to have everyone outside but you don't let them in the house <laughs> because you just never know if it's gonna be a mess or picked up or whatever and we knew that day that it wasn't company ready we'll just put it that way right but one of the girls was like oh my goodness i have to go to the bathroom and if you have to go to the bathroom and your house is a mile and a half away <laughs> like you can't just be like sorry you gotta hold it till you get home and you can't just be like you have to go outside right and so we let her in the house to use our bathroom. And when my mom found out about it, she goes, do you know that her mom washes the inside of her washing machine with a toothbrush? She scrubs it with a toothbrush. And that was the signal of like, her mom's a good housekeeper. Yeah. Our mom, that wasn't her strength, <laughs> you know? And so you don't let people in the house if their parents are good housekeepers. Well, you don't let anyone in, yeah. but you especially do not let the kids in whose parent is a really good housekeeper. And what was so funny is when I was reading through the comments um, from Tuesday's video, I had a flashback to that as I was seeing some of the comments of like, oh, well, don't you wash your dishes every day? And I was like, oh, right because those of us who don't wash our dishes every day, we don't tell the people that wash their dishes every day, right? <laughs> so all of you that wash your dishes every day, which we're so happy for you, you might not know that some of us do not wash our dishes every day, even if we have a dishwasher. <laughs> there was comments about that too. Even if we're on YouTube. <laughs> you know, but there's some other things we do. But today, let's break this down a little bit because if you don't do your dishes every day, there's nothing wrong with you. You're not lazy. You don't lack willpower. And so we want to dispel those myths, but talk about how we could take this and use it to our advantage. So those of us who don't do our dishes every day can still win. And so our mom would, is, I mean, literally one of the hardest working people we know. I still don't know how she did it. She worked full time, yep. had a husband who worked full time and farmed full time, three kids, and then she would often do like side accounting jobs for extra income, mm -hmm. chased all of us. It, and so something has to give, right? And it was the housework. And we didn't falter for that. No. We just knew you didn't invite friends over unless you had proper notice to get the house in order, right? Like yeah. you, you didn't want people just to stop by. <laughs> and I think a lot of people feel that way right now. You know, you're working from home, kids are home. There's just so much to juggle. Right. And it just is, is something has to give, right? And right. usually it's the housework. Right. Because at the end of the day, you're tired and you don't want to. Yeah. You know, unless it has been hardwired into you, right. you know, that the dishes are done every night and you just, it's like on autopilot and you just have that habit. And that is so cool for you. And honestly, I'm not putting down anyone who does their dishes every day because that's where I want to be. But I, I, what I don't like is when anyone calls themselves lazy or says that like, well, I'm lazy or I'm unmotivated or I can't get my act together to be able to do my dishes every day. Because the truth is, is that we all work with the same amount of willpower on every given day. And so our mom was using her willpower to get three kids out the door and get to work and deal with the stresses of work and, yeah. you know, to cook dinner and to have yeah. a relationship with my dad and, and all of that. And so by the end of the day, there, there wasn't any extra portion of willpower left to dedicate to dishes. And for any of us who have tried to start this new habit, we know what does it require in the beginning? A ton of willpower and so it could just be that you are using your willpower somewhere else right now and that's okay and then we get to decide okay is this a season right now so on Tuesday in my video I talked about that one of the ways to get our kitchen under control is to develop this habit of doing the dishes every single day and so we get to decide okay am I in a place right now where I can use some of my precious willpower to start a new habit like this? Or is it simply like, hey, I'm caring for aging parents. I have a difficult relationship. My kids have special needs. My job is really demanding. I'm going back to school. You know, it goes on and on. So you know what? Maybe right now <laughs> my willpower is being used up on all those things and I don't have any extra right now to give to doing the dishes or another new habit like that. 
and that's not wrong at all. So whether you do the dishes every night or not, none of us are in the wrong. It's simply that's where we've decided to put our energy. And that's where I think minimalism comes in and simple living, why it has so much appeal, especially if your hands are full, is because then we can do things to manage the inventory in your home and put systems in place that will help to make it less of a decision every day or mm -hmm. something that you have to apply yourself toward right. if you're already tired at the end of the day. So if you only have so many dishes, then you know then washing them isn't going to be as big of a deal like right I, like if i if we have dinner you know and we literally only have the four plates for the four people in our family and the four cups you know then actually doing it at the end of the day isn't as big of a deal and we know we need it if people want to have breakfast in the morning right so we can actually use this as a new filter when we're simplifying our kitchen we can say hey I want to create a kitchen that requires very little of my willpower to manage. And so again, that usually comes by significantly reducing the inventory. But what's good then is it causes us to look at things differently. So if I hold something up and I'm like, oh, should I keep this or not? It's like, okay, do I want to use my willpower, my emotional energy to maintain this? Do we use it that much that it's going to make the cut? And so it actually causes us then to look at things differently. And yes, we went to, down to the point then where we just had one set of dishes, dishes per person because it was self-limiting. So I didn't have to use so much willpower because it's not my natural intuition to do the dishes every single night. And so it was self-limiting. And so that was something I could do to make it so I don't have to use so much willpower and my family can't keep pulling dishes out of the cupboard when they're dirty. And I know too, like there was the comment like, hey, uh, you have a dishwasher. <laughs> like, <does> it, <laughs> and the thing is, is, is for those of us who have dishwashers, because I know a lot of our European friends and other people are like, you have a dishwasher. <laughs> like, unfortunately, the dishwasher still has to be unloaded mm -hmm. and you can't really just put stuff straight in it. Like right. you have to rinse it. If it's been sitting for a couple days, like you can't just put it in, no. right? And so the dishwasher can be helpful, but I mean, I don't know. I think at the end of the day, it's almost as easy to hand wash. Do you really mean we don't have enough? Yeah. yeah. Again, if you limit everything way down, mm -hmm. and I kind of just wash when I'm cooking as I go. And yeah. Yeah. You don't. I don't use it. So what I want to encourage you is that if this is something you want to invest in this year, I do think that highly simplifying your dishes makes it so that it's an easier undertaking because again you have to stay up on the dishes but you have to know yourself because other people might say no nah, i need to get the habit in place so i feel comfortable going further with the dishes and that's what i was talking about on tuesday like you know you're gonna have more confidence to simplify once this habit is in place so it's kind of chicken and egg but i think you just have to decide where you're at but for our friends that do wash the dishes every day you already have a head start. So I hope now that you can look around your kitchen and say, okay, wow, I have been really diligent in this. So haven't I built up trust with myself that I don't need two full sets of dishes in the cupboard or four sets or all of these storage containers. And you might be able to reduce your inventory now in your kitchen very confidently and have even less to manage. And so you might even free up some extra energy too then that you can use on other things that are more important to you. Well, and do you want to know how I developed the habit? Because mm -hmm. I wasn't great at it, honestly, because we do have so few dishes and having little kids, we just don't create a lot. So yeah. it was actually easy to let them just sit next to the sink at the end of the day and be like, oh, I'll get to it in the morning. Yeah. And then the morning you're behind and you don't do it. And then the next night you handle it. So that's how it happens, um, yep. even with less dishes. But you may have heard of A Mother Far From Home. It's oh, a, yeah. a blog. She's great. And she talks about having your little nighttime tidy up routine, the dishes being an important part of that. And she said something that just stuck with me. She was like, do not sit on the couch and then think you're going to get up and go do the dishes. <laughs> yeah. And especially like we get the kids to bed and you're like, oh, you know, and I have trained myself and that's the only time I let myself watch YouTube anymore mm -hmm. is when I'm doing dishes. And I can't believe how that has created this response of like, Oh, I get to watch YouTube now. Yeah, sure. I happen to be doing dishes, but like, I actually like want to do it. Yeah. It's like my little reward. And yeah. I can't believe how that little, uh, like, mm -hmm 
reward, reward. Yeah. has like completely solidified it in me. I actually can't remember the last time now that I went to bed with dirty dishes. Mm -hmm. A, because it feels so good waking up to a clean kitchen. Yeah. Um, but B, because I've created that little reward system. And so Dana from a slob comes clean, what she talks about too is that for those of us who haven't been in the habit of doing our dishes every day, we don't have a proper expectation of how long it actually takes when oh, you do it every day. So true. she calls it dishes math because we all know if something gets dried on, washing that dish can take two to three times longer, right? Yeah. Whereas if we just use it for dinner, it's actually very quick. And so she talks about how if we're in the habit of letting them accumulate for a few days, well, yeah, that's an hour to an hour and a half project, right? So then we're just thinking like, okay, even if I do it every day, that's what, a half hour? But it's actually not, it's like 15 minutes, right? And yeah. so there is kind of some mental shift that goes into it too, that we just, we don't even look at it properly if we haven't been doing it. And so I think that can help us then when and I was like, oh, it was actually, it was actually fairly easy. Well, I think it is because they're so much easier to wash when you do them every single day. So this is funny. So a lot of times if it's Princeton, if he's putting Adley down, I'll do the dishes while he's putting her down. And so I'll like get them all done. And then he's like just coming down the stairs from putting, but I want him to know yeah. that I just did all this work cleaning. <laughs> the kitchen didn't just get clean on its own. I've been working this whole time that you were up there. And so I'll like take my time, like wiping the sink. I mean like, oh, I just got all the dishes done. And <laughs> it's just funny. I know, but the actual point of that story is it didn't, it didn't take, take that long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I do, I want to encourage you that if this hasn't been a habit, you're not lazy. You're not wrong. It just hasn't been somewhere that you've put your energy and that's totally okay. And so I hope if you do want to start tackling that in the new year, I hope this is helpful. And if not, like no judgment here, man. Well, it's, that's why, that's yeah. why we hang out. Like Still that's why I'm here. Kids come <laughs> over and you're right? fine. You're good. <laughs> And as we turn the corner and just talk a little bit about faith this morning, I've just been so impressed upon the fact that the answers to our prayers may not be as distant as they sometimes feel. Mm -hmm. You know, the other night Princeton and I were praying for our nation and it can feel like, okay, we're two people out of 300 million, you know, and does that even, I mean, have an effect? And, and we pray for our world too. I know not everybody's here in the U S and, but I, I just have had this awareness, you know, when Jesus came, he said, the kingdom of God is at hand mm -hmm. and he came to live and breathe and be among us. And then he died and left us the Holy Spirit so that we would have this power and wisdom and discernment and leading from heaven. And so there's just the kingdom of heaven is, is near and the Lord is close. Yeah. And when we pray, he hears us. Mm -hmm. And and so I just felt impressed upon that. Not The answer to every prayer doesn't have to be after 365 days of blood, right. sweat, and tears prayers. Right. You know, that sometimes because we're in line with the heart of the Father and we're coming into alignment with the prayers of other believers, that there's a multiplication, there's an influence, and we do see the kingdom advance and we see heaven touch earth and we see the answers to our prayers. Well, and you know, we had mentioned the Bible recap last week and I don't wanna keep adding to your um, to-do list, but you could potentially listen to it while you're doing the dishes at night. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, but I can't believe how, so I've been trying to keep up then with the reading plan that goes along with it. Well, I've been listening to it through Dwell. And so I can't believe how just reinforcing that daily habit again, mm -hmm. how much more hopeful I feel and how much more I believe you now when you say that. Yeah. Because probably two weeks ago, it was like the pre-Christmas craziness. I was kind of dis disconnected. Be like, yeah, yeah, Diana. Yeah, yeah, of course. It's at hand. Um, but it's amazing how when we get reconnected and we just have those daily habits um, that it's like, yeah, yes yeah. it is, yeah. you know, so it's been good. This is uh, 1 John five fourteen. It says, this is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Mm -hmm. And the beautiful thing about prayer, as we anchor ourselves in the word, we have to right now. We have to, have to, have to. If you're listening to the Bible, if you're reading it on your phone, we have to be in the word right now. Otherwise, we are going to be tossed from yeah. side to side it is these are just tumultuous times so we have to be anchoring our heart in the word and what happens the more you pray and i've seen this in you because you do have a group every tuesday that you pray with 
that your faith has been so much stronger mm -hmm. during these last several months. Like, like there's been times that you've helped to like steady me a little mm -hmm. bit. And because what happens when you pray is you are placing your faith in something greater than you or the world or the natural around you. Mm -hmm. And so every time a prayer comes out of your mouth or is whispered in your heart, it re-anchors you and re-solidifies your trust in the Lord. And it helps you get connected to the eternal. Mm -hmm. You know, I remember you, you were telling us that we need to go outside and be among nature because it oh, helps yeah. us to see that things are bigger than us. When yeah. we're inside, we're always with things that are the same scale and yeah. it makes us feel like we're the biggest thing and now we have to carry all of these burdens. Mm -hmm. But when we get outside, you know, and when we can be in nature and be in something greater than ourselves, when we can pray, we're doing the same thing. We're anchoring our hearts and putting our trust in something greater than ourselves and it brings everything back into perspective yeah, and it restores our hope. Yeah. So, and you know, if it's a personal thing, obviously there's a lot to pray for in our world right now, but if it's a personal thing, you know, we've seen so many miracles. I have a friend who was just doing like a fun little Facebook live the other day and she was just encouraging people and she had a friend tune in from Brazil mm -hmm. and his mom had been sick in bed and hadn't been out of bed in two weeks. He just heard her praying through Facebook Live and all of a sudden she like sat up in her bed and she was like, I feel stronger. Mm -hmm. I feel I feel my strength returning. She put her feet on the ground. She stood up. And I mean, it was just a simple prayer here in the US that was broadcast into Brazil. It was one prayer and she yeah. was strengthened again. And so really everything can change in a moment. Your prayers are being heard mm -hmm. and they will have effect. So Father, I thank you. Lord, thank you that you, Jesus, that you went before us to make intercession on our behalf. We are so, so grateful. We are so grateful for our loving Father in heaven, and we are thankful for Jesus, our Savior, who makes intercession for us. And thank you for your Holy Spirit, Lord God, who helps us to pray, who, who strengthens us, who guides us. And Lord, Thank you that you hear our prayers and you are faithful to respond. Right now, Lord, I ask that you would just refresh those who have been standing in faith for a long time. Lord, would you stir in them a new strength, a new perseverance, and a new hope. Lord, that the answer to their prayer could be right around the corner. And Father, together, we just join in praying for our nation, our nations, and our world, Lord God. We pray for the light of heaven to shine brightly. We pray for the justice of heaven, that the church would rise up in prayer and in goodness and in love and in service to the world around us. And Lord, we pray for all of those who don't know you, especially our lost family members and friends, Lord God, that the light of salvation would touch their lives and that they would know the joy of spending eternity with you. So Father, I bless each one of us, Lord. I ask in this new year, Lord, that we would have faith to pray like never before, and that even right now, Lord God, that hope would rise up and that peace would settle deep in our souls as we establish ourselves firmly in you. And I bless each one of us now in Jesus' name.